it is that it is this exodus just this wave of people who are leaving and have left the church and it really happened during covid and then a certain concomitants came together that that has really happened i mean of just talking to you right now i can i can i'm sure i can come up with 20 names easily Amazing. of people who are never going back to church hmm. and at the root of that problem the the major cause of that problem is yeah. with all due respect yeah. it is the inconsistencies of church leadership That's it. I'm not talking about uh, you know leaders of a few hundred members or even a few thousand members. Yeah. I'm talking of the most recognized church leadership brands in the world. Right. Leaders of th- tens of thousands of pe- people, yeah. biggest congregations in the world are, are, yeah. are giving prophecies. Right. They are saying God said, right. God told me right. on this day right. at this season this will happen. Mark my word. It is the God that I serve. And then the day comes, the season comes, and nothing happens. Right. Not once, not twice, sometimes three, four times. Right. God said, and this all over the place, nothing happens. Yeah. And so people are now disenfranchised, they are disillusioned, they are disenchanted. Which kind of God? Who is lying now? Is it you that is lying or this God? And if that is the case, but we've been listening to you for years, so have you been lying all the time? So I guess the question is, yeah. what's happening, Rev? It's a leadership thing, like you said. It's a leadership thing. And see, when we address the leadership issue, there's a subtle dimension to it that people don't pay attention to or take for granted. Leadership culture. The dangerous thing about culture is that it influences your decisions without you even knowing because it operates at the subconscious level. I say that a tree, when you look at a tree, what is in the soil around the tree is what is inside the tree. It's difficult to divorce yourself from your environment. So, practically in every sector in Africa, right, and then around the world, whatever the culture in the society influences religion. Religion has the power to influence culture, to shape it. But if you are not careful, Culture also has the power to shape religion. Let me give you an example. So in Africa, like I said, we have the monarchical structure of government. It's like in the DNA of the average African. If you are not self-aware and purge yourself of it, that's the same structure you will produce. You produce in your family, you produce it in your business. If When you get into government, it's the same thing you will maintain. So it's in our churches. Mm. It's just the way it is, right? the people want to worship their leaders. So, if you don't go with that culture, you may not like have a large following. If you go counter-cultural, right, you will pay the price for it. <laughs> Although eventually it will pay you because you will have authentic true leadership. Sorry, let's stay there for one second. Right. If you start a church in our culture, as it were, yes. and you go the proper way, look, don't serve me. I'm not your God. I'm just, I'm one of you. If you go that, you know. They will that's... believe you are not anointed. <laughs> the person that our people will respect or honor is the one that shows up and you have 20 protocol officers coming with the person. Possibly the person even has a mobile police people that, two mobile police people that walk into the service with the person amazingly that's the person that people will believe has the anointing that's the one they want to touch the person's clothes uh, while the protocol person is pushing them away and they're falling down <laughs> and all that sadly because of the way culture works it works like i said you won't be aware of it but it will shape your values and be influencing your decisions so uh, again hmm because there is no equality the powerful are very powerful the powerless are very powerless right so um, rather than empower people to become also powerful is it pays you to keep them where they are while you dispense favors to them because then you have a large following what are the kind of messages we preach God will put food on your table. God will, which runs contrary to even the Bible itself, right? 
But then you go to societies where there's equality, you see that those things are taken care of. It's it's the easiest thing at least for you to get food to eat and for you to get a roof over your head, right? People are empowered and they have a voice to hold leaders accountable. <clears throat> so it's risky in Africa therefore for, for you to come out and say we are equal. <laughs> right, <laughs> they will think something is wrong with you as in the a first church place. leader. Yeah, as a church leader, they will think you don't have anointing, you know, and all that. And then we flaunt wealth, material wealth. Our people worship money because of the level of deprivation and poverty around. You want people to believe you are powerful, you are anointed, coming in your Rolls Royce, if, if, even if you've not even you've only paid don't part payment in it but that you came out you know or with some powerful dressing and clothing you go contrary to those which actually is what Christ they did you know and you would you would have to be patient because eventually if it's the truth you're building it will set people free you will get the results so that was the part we had to take okay So I say that to answer your question that we have a big leadership scenario but we must approach it also with empathy because those powerful leaders are doing things the best way they know how to their products of the culture the one mistake though that I see us making with that kind of a structure is that we don't allow the younger generation to speak soon enough we don't value them we practically obliterate them we stay too long we don't we don't practice succession we don't understand the power of succession at some point you disconnect from the younger generation because their needs are no longer your needs therefore there's dissonance like the older generation in Africa right now is just not getting the gen z's right at all these people who were practically born with phones in their hands or with technology you know and so on the older generation doesn't even understand that the people online are as powerful as the people they are looking at physically in their churches and so on Let me give an example. So in in this that we created a persona for our target. Right? We call the male version the Lagos and the female version Lagos and Jeep. And that helped us to focus, you know, everything in this that is targeted at those persons. When we created our persona in 1999, I was within the age range. I was Lagos and So you didn't need to tell me the needs of Lagos and I attacked them with passion. Today I am not Lagos and I am not Lagos and at all. I left that level a long time ago. So the likelihood is so it's taking me effort now and least leadership. It's it's taking me having to list thing to younger people to know what their needs are to be sensitive to them and to address them. So I pointed out to our management team in Desta. Say look at this table. Almost everybody is out of the Lagos and the age range. And those are the people who are supposed to lead we're about to lose them because if they don't see themselves on the stage they, we're likely not going to attract them anymore so we actually have new people coming on board in the next few months that are within that age range so that's the mistake i would say that the older generation is making at the time when we should become coaches we're still struggling to be players mm. on the field there's mm. no need Mm. We need to push the younger generation forward now. Then the level of misunderstanding will be less. They would even help us to understand what's going on better than us still playing by the old rules, right? And then being surprised. The younger generation right now, okay. <clears throat> Let me give an example. So, I, w- I was teaching in church just a few years back, just before COVID, and I made this assertion. I was teaching on the ego and I made this assertion that I'd been hearing for at least 30 years the eagle is the highest flying bird in the world the next day a church member sent a text message to pastor Nick and said 
I, I know I don't have the right to correct Pastor Sam, okay? But he said something in church yesterday that the eagle is the highest flying bird in the world. That statement is not correct. <clears throat> if I went Pastor Nick had told me, she told me gently, right? <laughs> <laughs> As she was saying it, I was on my phone checking on Google. The person was right. The eagle doesn't even come within the first 10. <laughs> <laughs> highest, highest flying bird. I went back to church and I apologized. <laughs> I told them, I, <laughs> this is what I said. <laughs> this is what one of you said. I checked it up. So... <laughs> That's why we need to allow younger people in into leadership, honestly, because we don't realize you say something now that you said before and nobody would even bother to swallow it. They are checking on Google as you are saying it. And now they are seeing hypocrisy. That's why people are leaving the church. Mm. Again, because people are holding their ground. The leaders are holding their ground. What do you mean? And these young people have gone to check. All those uh, in the original Greek that you were saying before, because nobody understood Greek. If they go <laughs> online now, they will get the correct meaning of what you're saying. They're seeing a lot of hypocrisy in leadership. They want authenticity. And uh, this is just a call. A call on all of us honestly to practice leadership with honesty and nobody says we should be perfect people are not expecting us to be perfect but they want us to be perfectly honest when i when i owned up <laughs> to that error on the ego then i was getting text messages and emails and people were saying wow thank you for doing that i never thought a pastor could do that to come back and admit that they were wrong you could just easily have glossed over it forgotten and moved on you know and all that yeah so people just want that authenticity and they also want accountability they don't want a scenario where we're raising funds in church we say that god wants them to be rich and then at the end of the day they find out we're the only ones that are getting rich mm. and they're getting frustrated mm. and the environment is changing we just need real leadership Mm. By, by the way, what is the highest flying bird in the world? The Griffon Vulture. <laughs> it flies, uh, pilots have sighted it at 37,000 feet above sea level. Wow. The same level where commercial airliners fly. That's amazing. Amazing. Uh, I can never forget that experience. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> they corrected the pastor. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tag just one question to this thing. Right. So when people come out and say God said, and they beat their chest and say it with all, in my own, I, I, I concede that there are many things that I don't know. In fact, I concede now more and more every day that I don't even know God as much as I thought I did. I, I really don't understand this guy like I thought I. But but I. But the one thing that is constant is that I'm I'm at least fearful of this guy there's there's an expression we use in yoruba uh you know that you're it's it's basically you're toying with god you're you're you're, you're toying with god's sword of vengeance I, I just i just can't they're just saying things that for me maybe it's because i was brought up in a christian home I'm, I'm just afraid even if i don't really understand the god when people come out in the name of this god i mean i'm asking you as one who's in that area yeah. because you have seen people is it that yeah they've lost sight or they were never in it or they lack fear. I mean, what makes a person come out in the name of this God that you by your own saying have read the words that he, he consumes like fire? Right. What makes you come out as a man of God and say things? I, I don't get, is it that they didn't hear or they heard wrong or what's going on here? That's what I don't get. I will well, be too afraid. <laughs> various reasons, honestly. Various reasons. First, Faith is a business of risk. This, <laughs> this hearing from God thing is is subjective, right? It's subjective. It's not like you really saw God like that physically or something. Um, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12 says that there are those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. So just like when you hang around someone long enough, you, you get to recognize them. If I had your voice through a door, I would I would recognize your voice, right? Because I've been hearing your voice for years. So it's the same thing with walking with God. 
nothing says you see we're still human so nothing says that we cannot make mistakes the important part is for us to be able to come back and say i thought i had mm. but it looks like i missed it here it, that's authenticity that's honesty for god's sake and nobody is supposed to kill anybody over that but once you tie your esteem to your status to the outcome right that's why i say faith is a business of risk it says say this you say it that's your own part of the job making it come to pass or not come to pass that's not your own part of the job right yeah so you you wait on him you trust him to do what he said he will do and of course he will do what he said he will do <laughs> it's a risk so and then if you find out that you made a mistake say that you made a mistake now so where people sometimes leaders think that people expect us to be perfect i used to think so too before i i did not know how to be vulnerable before admit my weaknesses and i thought people would lose respect for me until i began to read the books of uh, pastor yonggi cho in south korea who whose church at that time was the largest single congregation in the world i read his books and i saw him admitting some of his mistakes i could not believe my eyes did this man really read this book did he how can the pastor the most powerful pastor in the world be writing this kind of it didn't he realize people would lose respect for him but eventually he also explained it in one of the books he said he found out that if he was vulnerable and authentic with his people he said what it built was trust he said he found out nobody could lie against him in town if they wanted to spread a false rumor his church members would say you don't know our pastor if this thing was true he would tell us himself i said wow so if they are calling you kuba by your package you reach your next go you know they are deceiving you is a big lie tell them you are a human being my friend the example i saw in the bible uh peter the day cornelius a gentile you know had peter come into his home it was an angel that appeared to cornelius mentioned peter's name and gave this man the address of where peter was staying in another city and it was correct so as peter stepped into his house, the man just fell down and the bible says that the man worshiped him how did peter respond most leaders would absorb the worship of course <laughs> Ah, it's not easy <laughs> to get to this position. <laughs> Peter just grabbed the man by the shoulder, jacked him up and says, he says stand up. I'm a man like you. That's what leaders need to learn to do. There's not no nothing special about you, my friend. It's just <laughs> the grace of God. It's a privilege, it's an opportunity. Mm. You know, don't lose your humanity. Okay? Stay level-headed. Stay humble. Don't allow hubris to to take you to the place where you want to go. If not before long they will be singing I may need job for you <laughs> until they throw you <laughs> into a pit. <laughs> yeah, so um it is possible for us to make mistakes in here. I should say too though that the things that come with success, the money, the power, the influence, if you allow those to get into your head to become so important to you you know that you would compromise your values to get more of of the power of the money you're likely to make mistakes uh. you're likely to make serious mistakes because in order to sustain you know that image in order to keep the money coming in order you in order to not lose what you had you would have to lie you would have to say something god did not say like he said it and so yeah. those things come in sometimes mm. Rev, thank you. you know what i was laughing when you said uh, this uh, whole hearing from god thing is a is, is a risky business right <laughs> is that you now say that because your own is to say his own <laughs> is to do i i now remembered jonah <laughs> Right. And people a lot of people don't know that that is actually one of the reasons why Jonah ran away because that's what Jonah said in the end Jonah said you see True. this is why I did not want to come for you because I know that you can change your, your mind. mind I've said this thing now and this thing is not now going to happen 
and the Israelites who are back home are not here to see <laughs> how this thing has played out. So in their eyes now, it will be as if I lied when I told them that God said that uh, Nineveh will be destroyed. Now, now you have changed your mind. Now, now I'm a liar. Right. <laughs> so right. that's why. Okay, so I get that. So right. don't double down. If that happens, come back and say, look, I thought I got it. Yeah. I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Rev, do you have five more minutes? Sure. Okay, great. Because mm-hmm. I was just, look, you've said this thing in church for years. But it seems that now it's a pandemic, mm-hmm. really. And I, I don't want to look, I'm not trying to uh, assail anybody's faith or cast aspersions on how anybody worships or prays. Look, that's not my place to do. It's just that for me, um, God cannot be deaf. We, we seem to be living in an era now of very, very powerful, strong prayers. Shouting, it's always been our way, really. But now it seems to have come out into the mainstream, shouting prayers every morning, shouting, screaming, shaking, sweating, jumping. Uh, maybe it's become even more pronounced for me now that I have had the privilege of living in this United States for some four years now. And I've seen a system that works and I've been to their churches and they don't do that. And they were the ones that brought us this religion now. That's so where did we get this our own? shouting and screaming and jumping and sweating mm-hmm. what's going on here right <laughs> okay culture culture again the power of culture <laughs> primarily from scratch our cultures always believed in god believed in the invisible believed in the fact that it's supernatural powers that control how things go down here uh, we've always been heavy on making sacrifices and things like that. So that part of Christianity we caught. And the more difficult things get in the environment, then the more of that, the more we tend to rely on that. Call on God more. Pray some more. So which is okay. Um, people have different temperaments right so let them express themselves god doesn't have a problem with that the only thing i just plead for is the need for us to balance that power side of god that miracle side of god to balance it with the wisdom side of god that balance is what they found in this part of the world that hmm, when god put man down here he created a creator <laughs> the first introduction we have to god in the bible is his creative ability in the beginning god created and then the same god says let us make man in our own image after our likeness he created us to be creators whenever you are calling on god to come and create what he has given you power to create you are wasting your time period that's why with all the prayers, he's not created roads, he's not built houses, he's not built our economies for us, he's not built factories, he will not. Just forget it. That's why I'm, I'm pleading for the balance. It's not good to swing on the wisdom part and to leave the power side, the sovereignty of God, because man will always confront situations that science cannot handle or resolve. So we will need God. But we should not swing to the extreme. Pendulums have this tendency of swinging to the extreme. And human nature just behaves like that. You know, it's that you come to this or not. But the best thing is to stay in the middle. Africa, it's a prayer. If I am begging, <laughs> it's a plea. We're not going anywhere. The, the 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 improvement in the economy it's not rocket science if you don't have something to sell you can't have money what do we have to sell to the world bicycles we're not creating not to talk of motorbike before we move to cars right we've got to be innovative it's the way it works and we're not going to do that if we're not ready to promote the value of thinking the value of wisdom the value of knowledge the power of principles so I, I would not have any problem if we were as intense in promoting knowledge 
and skills and wisdom as we were in praying with intensity. I will not have any problem. <laughs> you know what I think? If we were that way, if we were intense in promoting knowledge and wisdom and skill, we, we would wouldn't need. need. <laughs> Abby, we I wouldn't need you. to be praying and be shouting and be stomping like that. Our prayer points would even be different. Yeah. Our prayer points are tied to meeting basic needs. Yeah. Like food. They've cracked those issues. The people that think with innovation, what the farmer will produce over one acre hours it would take 10 to 20 to produce it mm. yeah it, um, where there's no wisdom you must exert more strength yeah where the axe axe is dull mm. you must more exert strength. more strength yes we we're not efficient mm. we waste a lot of resources so i agree with you that um if we did our part yeah then we would not be calling on god to come and do our uh, part for us yeah <laughs> they, we will discuss more with god about advancing the yeah. world and taking on more serious issues yeah. right Rev.